everyone, and welcome to another Yale Alumni Live. We are very excited to be here on Facebook and in Zoom with you all tonight. We have a larger group than usual, which I am very excited about. It is a team of Bulldogs of the last decade, Yaleys from the last 10 graduating classes who have come together to produce a really, really exciting experience that Yaleys can be a part of. And so we are live tonight with a few members of the team and a few more are going to be joining us shortly. And my name is Stephanie. I'm a member of the YA Regional Clubs team, and I'm very excited to be your host for this evening. So just as a reminder with Yale Alumni Live, as most of you know, we are live both in Facebook and in Zoom. So we welcome your comments both in Facebook and in Zoom, and I'll be getting those over to our team that's here with us tonight. So I think we're just going to jump in and get started and welcome all of you. And I guess happy St. Patrick's Day as well. If any of you are enjoying a Guinness at home, slancha, enjoy. We're happy to be here on a celebratory evening with Yaleys with our friends from a lot of different places, actually. So you guys will all have to tell us where each of you are located, because I know that you are across the country working collaboratively on this project. So we have joining this first are Jeremy Weiss and Calissa Small, who are responsible for this whole production called The Wandering. And so they're going to tell us a little bit about what The Wandering is and how you can participate, really, guys, right? Because it's an interactive experience. So we're very excited to have Jeremy and Calissa. So Jeremy and Calissa, you can unmute, say hello, and tell us a little bit about yourselves and this amazing project that you guys have been working on. Hello. Nice to see everybody. Calista, do you want to do you want to yes. start us off? Yes. Hi, I'm Calista. I'm um, a Yale grad, class of 2014. I was in Brantford, and uh, I actually met Jeremy when we were undergrads. We did a we did a lot of theater together, and we became very very good friends. And we created this show in the pandemic for many reasons. Uh, one of them to create community, create community across distance, and also to innovate the way that uh, live performance can be experienced the pandemic. The show itself is um, a very multidisciplinary project uh, due to the nature of how it was made. It's an online and offline show inspired by the work of Fran Schubert. And so it's a visual album. It's a narrative drama and also a live experience that transports and surprises and arrives at your doorstep. Um, and you can, learn more about it at experiencethewandering.com and we'll be talking about how the you know how you can buy tickets i'm sure later and jeremy what else yeah hi i'm jeremy weiss i was class of 2015. um like calista said at yale um we did a lot of theater together and during the pandemic um i'm an opera singer during the pandemic i wanted to find a way to keep making art so i went to calista and um, we brought together this team of artists to, to, like Calista said, innovate the way that art can be experienced during a pandemic. Um, and I think <laughs> that's what we've that's what we've done as a team. We've also um, partnered with the Schwartzman Center at Yale. Um, we're going to have a workshop with uh, with students there later on this month. And the piece is actually also available um, to Yale students through their individual residential colleges as well. So that's some exciting weaves um, of Yale through this project, in addition to the fact that 11 Yaleys are working on this piece as well. So like Calista said, it's a narrative drama, it's set to Schubert's art song, and it's an experience that actually involves, and one of the main innovative aspects that we have integrated into the show is a package that arrives at your front door. Um, it looks something like this um, from the outside. I, I'm like, do I want to open it? I don't know. Or do we want to like we can't open it later, to see what happens if they if they get it in the mail? <laughs> inside, it's theatrical. There's constant discoveries, um, and I hope you'll come along for the ride. We excitingly have a lot of our team here who are also Yaleys, um, and um, we're hoping that that um, that everybody will will also share something um, exciting that they've they've brought to this piece as well. So I guess we can we can move on, Stephanie, unless, unless you have other yeah. questions. So one thing that I do want to touch upon right before we introduce the rest of the team that's here this evening. So Jeremy and Calista, uh, Jeremy, Calista and I spoke yesterday on Instagram and talked just a little bit about their Yale stories and how this group all came together. And one of the topics that's been really you know popular and at the forefront of a lot of conversations is about creativity during COVID. And Jeremy and Calista had some really interesting things to share yesterday when they talked about how this all came about and, and how they found their creative outlook 
outlet during this time. So I don't know, Jeremy or Calista, maybe one of you or perhaps some of the team members as you guys all come up and kind of introduce your parts of the show, you might want to touch on that. But Jeremy or Calista, rather, I think yesterday you said we were talking a lot about not necessarily boundaries, but things that, you know, some restrictions that were put yeah. in place and how, how it helped you all come together to create this. So would you talk a little bit about that before we move on? Yeah, absolutely. So I really believe that creativity is, um, comes out of constraint. And so you need to set, if you're working and creating something new, you want to set constraints for your project. And by doing that, you actually allow yourself, your, you allow your imagination to start really working. So for this project, the constraints were set for us. We were not able to come together and perform something in a theater. And we didn't want to use Zoom. That was a huge constraint. So we started thinking, well, how could we create an experience that was like live performance without using Zoom or live streaming at home? What does that look like? Well, maybe we have a visual album and maybe we send things to the mail and maybe we incorporate augmented reality, for example. And that's how those ideas start to generate. And also um, aesthetic constraints, for example, how do we want people to, uh, what do we want this project to look like and feel like that uh, aligns with our mission of creating community across distance and also, um, and also uh, introducing people to classical music that they've never maybe heard before. So our, our aesthetic constraints were very, um, we want the show to be really welcoming and also very beautiful and enticing, for example. And um, there were many other ways that constraints actually helped make this show what it is. And um, even though the pin, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, I would also add that just like within those constraints, we wanted to create something that felt live and also had aspects of live performance that are exciting, right? Like one aspect of live performance that's exciting is you go into a theater and you sit next to another human being and you consume a piece breathing the same air, right? And maybe like touching a person's arm on the seat next to you, right? It's like, what? how do you capture that when we're not next to each other and we can't breathe the same air, right? And that sort of, that was a huge jumping off point for the way that we um, conceived this piece in that we knew we wanted to create community across the audience that that, that, that was consuming this piece and have kind of this this um, engagement with your present surroundings through kind of an engagement with the physical world also through the engagement with with technology in a different sort of way than we're used to engaging with it through some of the augmented reality that Sahos developed um, through kind of using net art um, as as uh, as a medium through which to consume art on the web rather than through Zoom, and also through opportunities during the piece that audience audiences have that are mediated um, to um, to connect with other audience members as well, kind of in ways that make you feel like you're consuming a piece of art with other people at the same time in sort of the present moment. Um, so that's that, those those were also um, aspects that that contributed to the creation of this thing. And that is actually an absolutely perfect segue into introducing Sahil because he is the first member of the team that you guys had in your lineup. So Sahil, I would love for you to join me and tell me just a little bit about yourself and your Yale experience and then what you have done as a part of The Wandering. Hi, Stephanie, and hi, everybody. And uh, I'll jump around, but I'll start with how The Wandering found me. <laughs> Uh, Max, who graduated with me in 2017 from Yale, uh, came to me and said he had an idea for a performance. And what if it could incorporate some of our immersive technology? What if we could bring the cutting edge of computer graphics into storytelling? And I didn't need much convincing uh, to say yes. And uh, what got me to this point was that at Yale, I studied computer, graph, uh, computer science and economics, but I'd always had an interest in visuals. I ran a, um, I ran a, uh, a comedy show that was, uh, you know, taped and edited and, and, you know, a lot, a ton of visual jokes that way were able to be put forward. So that's, I think, where this interest came from way back when. And what made it possible now is that I run a company called Space Inc. We're live at space.io, S-P-A-S-E, and we turn photos into models for e-commerce because in the e-commerce world, stores are competing for the best visuals and the stores with the best visuals are going to win. So we had that technology running in parallel to this 
a new idea for a show that was also being developed. And the question was, what if we could bring some key uh, symbolic elements during the show into the viewer's home? And, uh, and the, the answer is, uh, I mean, yes, we could. So <laughs> we went for it. And uh, I'd like to show a demo now, which was, uh, which is revealing a, I think a very cool moment in the show. And Jeremy, you have to tell the story, but if you go to f.space.io slash the performer, and Stephanie, I'll turn it yeah. over to you. I'm gonna uh, pull let's that see what that looks like. For us right now. You know, I had it open. <laughs> Don't you love when this happens on Zoom? Just a second, guys. I'm gonna we'll find it. I'll jump in we'll while, you're, while you're talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about how this, how this happened. So basically, like, like Sahal said, we wanted to find ways to bring the performance into people's homes through these objects and through things that we couldn't ship in the mail, like the object you're going to see right now, which is a fish. Obviously, we couldn't ship that in the mail. Um, so we needed to bring it into people's homes through augmented reality. So Sahal came along um, to help us with that. In the film, there's, there's a key moment where this fish actually appears and is one of the characters. Crazy, um, but cool. Um, and so our, our, our director, who's also a Yale, Lara Panazadi, who is in France, so it's very late there right now, so she couldn't be here today. Um, she brought the fish into the film. Charlotte saw the fish in the film and was like, we need to make this one of our AR objects. Callista and I were like, yes, we need to make this one of our AR objects. We contacted Sahil to, to develop it. We're like, can it swim? And Sahil was like, yes, it can. So this is what Sahil developed. It's unbelievably beautiful, I think. Um, and it looks exactly like the fish that you'll see um, in the film. Um, Sahil, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about this is on a white screen. What does it look like um, through the AR? Right, through AR, it will be as close as it can to being in your room. So you'll, your camera will, um, the, the, the object will be superimposed on what your camera sees and it'll look like it's really there. And uh, that's what's I think so exciting to me because it's the combination of, um, of, of color, of light, of 3D geometry, of uh, optics and software and storytelling. So it's all coming together and uh, that's what we're doing now. So uh, Jeremy, thank you for coming up with the idea. Thank you for making this. I would have no idea how to make a fish swim like this. So great work. It's Thanks. just a couple of thousand triangles. That's all it is. <laughs> and this is me just flipping this beautiful fish around in the background here. So Sahil, did you tell us now where, are you, where did you originally grow up and how did you choose Yale? That's a question we just like to ask everybody to understand where they are coming from as a Yaley. I grew up in New Jersey and I chose Yale because uh, I knew it'd be challenging. I knew it'd have great, uh, during bull, bulldog days, right? That's what, I've never said that word in such a long time. Uh, you know, during bulldog days, um, I met really great people and I knew I'd want to study with people like that. And, um, and also just the fact that it was on the East Coast, which was, you know, it uh, helps with the family convincing. Um, and then also, um, I mean, it really comes down to, yeah, the people at Yale and, and I now realize this in 2021, but because of Yale, I get to meet people who excel at theater, who have an incredibly creative mind, uh, in worlds outside of, um, outside of just software, just, just, um, you know, um, just reality, but also imagination. And I don't know if that's the right, um, defining line, but uh, I meet people like that at Yale. So that's why I went to Yale. And this this project is, is evidence of that, obviously, since you all came together post-graduation and are creating things together and, and doing an amazing job of it. Do you have a favorite moment or part of this process? Has there been something that's really stood out to you as part of this creative process of the wandering that you can share with us? Uh, yes. And it's the fact that it's all based on a belief where the idea for this came from uh, just an idea that I think Max had. And then it just started into a conversation that uh, it, it, this whole show is like a confidence building exercise. You know, like the idea came to me, I thought maybe I could do it. I've never done it before, but I think I can do it. And then that little bit of confidence went back to Max 
went to his team, came back to him, came back to me about a hundred times until there's something that's real. And it reminded me of how I started the company, <laughs> how I started space, where um, it was really just a belief that it was possible uh, getting one yes from one customer in a conference in Toronto and, um, and just letting that loop over and over again until we had something really that we could be really proud of. So that first message was probably the most uh, exciting moment for me because I knew something like this could happen. So I should let it happen. I absolutely love that. And I saw Callista, you all can't see Callista in the background, but I saw Callista with the biggest smile on her face when you said that. So I think that struck a chord. Sahel, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And hopefully you'll be able to stick around for a little bit if anybody has any questions about what they saw as part of your role with The Wandering. The next person I'd like to introduce sure. is Christine Thanks, Shaw. Definitely. You're welcome. Christine Shaw, who is a number, another member of the team. Christine, feel free to unmute, join us, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with The Wandering. Um, hi, so I'm Christine. Uh, I am. I come in from uh, the theater angle. Uh, I'm a devised theater artist, which basically means um, I make um, all the work I make is original. So, um, and I work in. I tend to work in non-traditional processes. That basically means I don't sit down and write a play. Uh, I don't have a playwright hand me a play. Everything I make is made uh, from the ground up with an ensemble. So this is actually a very familiar, like I typically work with other people. However, that totally went away <laughs> during the pandemic. Um, everything I do relies on making live work in front of an audience. So the beginning of the pandemic was utterly distressing to me because there's absolutely no work that I can do online. Um, a lot of my work, in fact, like, is built around audiences. I've made plays where that the play itself is determined by things the audience does. Um, that's what I'm accustomed to doing as a theater artist. So this was exciting because for me, this was how do I keep that alive um, when there's absolutely no way to be in the same room uh, with my audience. Um, so I was the person, I came in very early in this process um, when basically Jeremy had said, I, I wanna, I want to be able to sing art songs during the pandemic. How can we make that cooler? Um, and that's my typical role is somebody says, I have an idea and my job is to say, cool, how do we, how do we bring that to an audience? What does that actually look like um, from a theatrical perspective? So um, my big goal all along was I want to get an audience interested and I want an audience to feel like they're, they're alive and they're with me. That's what I crave. And I can't get that as a performer, but I'm thrilled to try to bring it to an audience in this project. Um, so my job was typically on this project thinking about, okay, well, how will the audience like actually receive this? How do we keep them engaged? How do we keep them um, interested and, and make it not feel like we spend so much time in front of screens? Um, how do we still feel excited about performance and it doesn't just feel like another YouTube video that I've clicked on. Um, so my job from the get go was thinking about great, what can we, I really was excited about sending things in the mail. Um, what can we send in the mail? What can we do on that front? Uh, the AR is so exciting to me because I feel like that came out of like, there's so many things I wanted to make people do it, like have in their homes. I was like, oh man, I would love if we could like send them this. I think we had like magical plans of so many things I wanted to send. And I was like, you know, that would cost like $50 to ship everybody just the things you'd like to send. So like, thank goodness for people who know technology better than me. Um, and we're able to bring that into the project. But yeah, that's where I come from in this project is kind of designing the experience for you, the audience member, um, and making sure you get to feel excited about that. I'm very excited to get to test it on our first Yale audience members next week. Um, we have our little test crew that's going to be our first feedback to hear, cool, did this make you feel what you feel in live theater? Um, and I get to hear from them next week, so I'm very excited about that. But yeah, that's my role in this project. That is exciting. And I feel like something magical has happened with the mail over the course of this past year. It's sending a letter, getting anything in the mail now is a very exciting moment because it is, it's opposite of the screen. It's different. It's another way to engage with the outside world. So Christine, tell us what year you graduated from Yale and what your residential college was. Uh, I graduated in 2014 from Grace Hopper. 
And what were some of the activities that you were involved in while you were at Yale? I was totally your stereotypical Yale theater kid. Um, <laughs> pretty much only did theater. Did I do anything else at Yale? I I don't remember. Um, I was I was in like every dramatic show, every, like all the all the shows, singing, dancing around. I I was that theater kid. Um, I'm sure that annoyed everybody. I was a theater major. Um, I devised my own. My first piece of devised theater was actually my senior thesis at Yale. Um, I took like a clown class, of course. Um, that's what we take in the theater major at Yale. While while people were learning computer programming, I was clowning. Um, and I took a class where we had someone come in who did what is called devised theater, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing! That's what I want to do." And by my senior year, I got to actually build my own show from the ground up um, at Yale, and that was exciting. And that's become what I do with my life now. Um, and I, I owe it all to Yale. <laughs> I love that. What was the name? Will you tell us the name of the show? Yeah, my, my senior thesis is called The Water Play. Um, I did flood a Yale theater with water and get in very big trouble. And, and fun fact, who the man who was at that time the like, administrative director of that theater i guess uh, or like or like keeper of that theater now is the teacher of the class that we're doing the workshop with and i think his only memory of me is like is a problem child at yale who like flooded his precious theater um and so now i'm i've been having to send him emails for this project um and i don't know if he remembers if he's watching now maybe he does but maybe he remembers that i was that kid who flooded his theater yeah, I think you just gave yourself up, but that's okay. I'm sure it's it's all in good fun. It was an expression. So tell us just a little bit more because I'm very interested to hear just a little bit more about this class that you are going to be testing this on and, and how that partnership came to happen. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have two kind of multiple ways that the Yale community is, current Yale community is engaging with this. Um, Yale has this new center called the Schwartzman Center, um, which is this awesome new thing, didn't exist when any of us were there. Um, but their, this was their inaugural year. Um, obviously, many things were put on hold, but we were really excited to get to step in. Um, and part of our partnership with them involves basically a cohort of 20 students that actually stretch it's going to be some undergraduate students, some graduate students, all the way to a postdoctoral fellow that are all going to be coming together and workshopping the show with us. Um, so they actually all got to submit some work of theirs that we're going to help them and give them kind of professional guidance on. And in exchange, uh, they will be play testing the show for us. Um, so they're getting the, the world premiere um, next week. They get to see the show for the first time. Um, they'll be giving us feedback to make anybody here who buys a ticket it'll make your experience better hopefully um, it's in the hands of these 20 Yale students that are that are getting to help us move the show along um, and then there's also a class currently at Yale that's about um, performance in the time of COVID um, that that's literally they they constructed a new class this semester that's about digital performance and so we were invited to come in one week for that class their assignment for the class is going to be seeing our show um, and then we're going to get to talk to them about what it's like to make theater in the time of the digital world that's absolutely fantastic i love hearing about partnerships between alumni and students i think that's what makes yale very special and this is exciting i can't wait to hear how it goes with the students thank you so much for being here christine really appreciate you taking the time to tell us a little bit more about yourself and what your role is in the wandering and christine hopefully we'll be able to stick around for a little bit for questions at the end if anyone has questions for Christine. So we're going to move right along. We have another member of this amazing team, Charlotte McCurdy, who is up next. So I'm going to switch over to Charlotte and ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your Yale experience and what your role is in this project. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Hi, everybody. I'm Charlotte McCurdy. I was uh, JE 13, which I think officially makes me the old man on the Yale side of the team for what it's worth um i was part of the co-creative team that was dealing with the conceptualization um and also served as the design director dealing with um designing and fabricating elements that would go into the film and then adapting and connecting the elements that come to your home and how they connect to the objects in the film 
Um, and as an undergrad, I had the pleasure of making uh, devised theater with Callista and Jeremy. Um, that was also uh, the, the one project I spent the most time on with Jeremy was, a, was connected to the question of um, the role classical music can play in contemporary culture. So there's probably some threads there. Um, and then I also made work with uh, Zach Bell, who was part of the creative team and screenwriter and edited the, the final film component, who I think we'll be talking a little bit later. Um, yeah, and so it was a pleasure to sort of reconnect some of those neural pathways. Uh, after leaving Yale, I did not make any more device theater. I went into design and I'm an industrial designer at this point. Um, and so it was, like a joy to drop into some of those collaborative pathways and be part of this really organic process. I feel like Sahil, like the example of that fish is, is such a vivid um, instantiation of how sort of there was this major positive feedback back loop within the group of ideas echoing and reflecting and refracting into like their more, more and more exciting form, which is I think the best possible outcome. And I think that's a real testament to the collaborative environment that Jeremy and Calista created. Um, they talk about the sh they want with the show to create community across space. And I feel like what they were able to do on the creative team in terms of creating community was an incredible gift. Personally, I'll speak for myself. Um, and uh, what else to say? Yeah, so there, there's, you've seen sort of the, some of the print materials, some of the AR materials. Um, there are, are sort of interactives that Christine has alluded to that are part of the mail that connect to some of the pieces that um, and make salient and relevant and vivid uh, some of the things you that are depicted in the filmic component. So sort of really connecting that thread between the digital and virtual, the real world um, and the narrative uh, and hopefully Hopefully it's super successful. And I uh, am again, like an outsider to classical music. So it was, it was super exciting for me to be approached by Jeremy and Callista being like, we wanna make a thing about opera in your living rooms. Guess what? There's a 200 tech year old technology for that. It's called art song. I was like, wow, okay, you got me. Um, and I think there's a lot of, I, I was also compelled by, um, this being an idea that had been brewing for a long time, even before the pandemic. And the pandemic was an, a, a created fertile ground for something that there was urgency for anyway. Um, and that I think is part of the strength of the piece is that it's it's not about the pandemic. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's informed by it, but um, it's a piece that needed to exist and the opportunity arose um, in this time. So, so okay. period. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so Charlotte, so we've, obviously you guys have worked amazingly well together. You've had so many successes in, in getting it to this point. What are some of the things that were challenging about this project? And I'm putting you on the hot seat a little bit, but I hope you don't mind. I know you guys are all brilliant and can answer any question I throw at you, but just talk to us a little bit about, so obviously the pandemic is not about the pandemic. Thank God you can talk about something else. It's a different, different topic. It gives us, you know, art, creativity, all these different outlets. What are some of the challenges that you did face though in this environment? Totally, yeah. So I think um, I think it connects to part of what Christine was speaking to is like, there is so much creativity in and so much energy in being in the same room as other people and the process creatively, creatively of being able to feed off of the energy is so valuable. So trying to, to pursue some of those outcomes in a platform like this. Like, to be clear, this is the most team members I've been on a single call with it in this entire process, because it was all these batons passing back and forth and these small groups like iterating. And I think that's a testament to Jeremy and Calista, like driving the ship, at least from the, the part of the process I saw, they, they, were, they were my handlers. Um, but uh, a really concrete example would be, um, I was working on was as was about distance and space. And so we had, I um there's a there's a mask that's prominently in the film that you'll see um, that involved a lot of hand fabrication on my part. And I was like 
racing against the clock to get this thing done hours and hours of like hand on work and then like put it to FedEx, like spend the money, next day air, send it to Kanki Key to be filmed. And then two days later, I get a text from Calista being like, where is it? Where's, where's the package? Like we are, like the team is gathering, the film crew is coming. Like, where's this prop that is important for the structure of the show? And there was, and it was like, I'm sure everyone has experienced this mail is a little bit unreliable. There's huge backups in uh, even the private second party logistics company. So it was, uh, it was a, there was a moment where there was a, it was, the heart was in the throat, but it arrived in time and it worked out. But that's an example of like uh, things that you'd like to be able to count on um, in, in normal times. Like you had to build in more, more padding. And I think that also connected to taking care of each other as a team. I certainly needed to be like handled carefully at times when things got really frustrating. Um, and I appreciate this group for, for making that possible. I think we've all been there. We've all had our ups and downs in this past year. For exactly. Sure. We've needed people to pick us up when we felt a little bit down. I see Calista itching in the corner. Okay, Go I ahead, Calista. I just have to say, <laughs> yes, when the, I, because the, the FedEx, and we were tracking the FedEx, Charlotte had sent me the tracking number. I received the tracking number. I obsessively tracking because like, it was a matter of like, we, like an hour or two and we weren't going to be able to get the shot. And we, it was an incredibly integral is essential prop we, it, we just if we didn't have it, it would, nothing who knows we'd have to move everything and so I'm waiting outside my house my car with my mask on waiting for the FedEx driver to arrive and I'm like please come please please come and the FedEx driver is this normal looking person comes up and is just like doing his job and I intercept him on the way to my front door and I grab the package and I say I literally said to him I was like you have no idea how big of a deal this is and he was like I guess I don't like, yeah, I got to. I was like thank you so much and I raced I raced over to the set so yeah 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 anyway we Charlotte, got it we got it Calista, where is the set you just mentioned the set where were you oh being yeah the set? um so it was <laughs> so we filmed in my um where I have been based in the pandemic it was it's my family's hometown it's a small town called Kankakee Illinois it's an hour and a half south of Chicago and we chose that location for a number of reasons one of them being um it was safer than filming in a city um because we filmed everything outside for the most part or in large spaces and we also had access to places where we could house people who needed to be housed and um and so yeah for for given the fact that we there were like 20 how many 28 20 a good number of people on set at one time during covid we want to make sure we had enough space literally so kankakee also kankakee there is a frank lloyd Wright house at kankakee uh that is gorgeous and we actually were able to film there for free which was amazing so it was another reason why we chose that location Awesome. Incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Glad your FedEx package made it. I'm sure that that FedEx uh, delivery driver spent a few minutes wondering what was in that package. You guys should really consider if you could track him down and send, <laughs> send him an invitation to participate. He would, I'm sure, appreciate that after you stalked him, Calista. I love that. We all had that moment too. So I think we're going to move over and introduce Max Soberman, who we've heard his name a few times already this evening. So Max, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in The Wandering? Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Max Sauberman. I am the youngest sibling in this call, I think. I was Polly Murray, class of 2018, by way of Brantford 2017. I actually did a year with the Whiff and Poofs in between, and I am the executive producer on this project. Uh, by the way, just a shout out, because I don't think we've made it clear yet to our audience on Zoom, our audience on Facebook Live, is that tickets are live and available now on our website, which is experiencethewandering.com. So before my spiel, just want to make sure get that in. So my role as executive producer for The Wandering. What this means is that I am an integrator and a connector for the various challenges that have hit our path along the 11 month long development of this project. Um, our project has a whole lot of different work streams up and running and operationalizing. You'll hear it from hearing how different the work that Charlotte does and the 
it's Christine does and the Sahil does and everyone's working in and uh, we have to find ways to execute our creative ideas on a budget, ways to build a product that is inclusive and engaging for all different segments of audience members. One that's timely and appropriate for the moment that we're living through. Uh, we have to find ways to plan the packages through a sales and demand planning process to project our financials and cash flow, to broker our cross-institutional partnerships across many, many arms of Yale University, as well as Indiana University and some other places as well. Uh, we have to fundraise and raise revenues pre-box office to let us afford to film our narrative album uh, on site in Kankakee, as, as you've heard, with a close to 20 person film crew on site in COVID compliant conditions. We have to execute in our publicity goals. So all of those in between kind of, um, roles that connect across the work streams that you heard about in detail from each of our creative team members. That's kind of where I sit. A more tactical role descriptor for me on this project would be something like chief non-creative problem solver. Um, as for how I got involved in the project, my relationship with Jeremy goes way back to 2013 when he was music director and actually tapped me into the Spizzwings acapella group on campus. And we have been great friends since. Uh, certainly never closer though than in this pandemic year, which is wild. Uh, Jeremy is the kind of artist and friend um, when he, he's just so talented and has such vision that when he calls, you listen. So he and Callista came back to me in, in, in May of 2020 with their idea. And then we just started dreaming and building and conceptualizing and pitching. Um, I brought to the team another Spizzwing who's not on this call, the incredible Tan Tan Wang, who embodied the intersection between technical programming and visual arts. Um, I also connected the team with Sahil, who you heard from, uh, and with whom he didn't mention, I go way back. In fact, all the way back to sixth grade, when we were lucky enough to go to middle school and high school and college together. And uh, where actually my younger brother works part-time for his company, Space, the, uh, the augmented reality modeling and designing company that he, that he started. So we got the team together person by person, then it kind of just snowballed into exactly what we dreamed of and, and then something even bigger. Um, and on a personal front, kind of where I fit into the mix, my background at Yale is that I majored in economics and very much nerded out about the business, supply and demand, all that fun stuff. But what I was really spending my time on, all sorts of involvements in the arts. Uh, originally as a performer, I mentioned I was in the Spizzwings, I was also in the Glee Club and the Whiff and Poofs and did a ton of musical theater uh, performance on campus. And then I started to pivot as I got older into more administrative roles. I became tour manager, became business manager, eventually executive producer and theater manager and developer of new musicals that would develop a uh, debut on campus. That was very much kind of the hallmark experience of my super senior year after the whiffs, just kind of producing all sorts of new musicals, teaming up with composers and lyricists and putting their work in front of new audiences. So I was very much intent on continuing that kind of dynamic, that kind of binary professionally, you know, managing the business and logistics sides of artistic and musical and theatrical projects that I'm deeply passionate about. And so I actually began my career a little bit non-traditionally given that path in management consulting, where I shuffled from business to business, client to client, helping C-suite executives with their biggest problems. And I totally loved it, how strategic it felt every day, but I found that what it was missing for me was the ability to connect to consumers, to audiences, to build and cultivate an experience that delights, one that connects where my role actively enhances the consumer experience. Um, so about a year ago, I pivoted to a role managing strategy and analytics uh, for a cheese snacking company, which has actually been the most hilarious parallel to my role in The Wandering. Uh, the types of projects I do each day at this company called Wisps, between pitching our business to customers, balancing financials, assessing marketing effectiveness, planning raw material orders for demand, planning the public vision for our brand, all that fun stuff. That's very much the kind of work that I apply from my day job over to my night job with The Wandering. So it's been a great fit, a wonderful experience working with this team. Uh, and I guess that's my, that's my little interest. So Max, where are you physically located right now? So I, I also grew up in Jersey where I spent most of the pandemic, but I actually just six weeks ago was able to move to my own apartment in, uh, in Brooklyn in Dumbo. I was just looking at the time thinking to myself, I think that Max is in New York City and how does he have this much energy at quarter to 9 p.m.? Um, you are on top of day. it. It's amazing. I'm, I'm blown away. So, so it's almost funny that I'm going to ask you this question. It is actually funny to me um, because I feel like you're excited about everything and you're just so enthusiastic about this whole project but i would love for you to as you know the executive producer tell us like what was your favorite part of this whole process like what's one moment that like really stands out to you as having been special this this project has been awesome from from beginning to end and, and especially in the last couple of weeks as we start 
showing it to people that aren't on the team and you know mentioning that weird thing that I'm doing on the side after work, uh, and actually showing them the trailer and having them be like, wow, I didn't realize it was this, that was cool. But I would say that's, that kind of pales in comparison to the experience just dreaming this up together uh, in those weekly production meetings I would have with Jeremy Callista back in the spring, um, thinking about you know going from let's do something about Schubert, something about art song, but something that isn't you know the boring Zoom theater that we were starting to see in the beginning of the pandemic, where all the theater companies turned into this kind of more conventional way of conveying dramatic narrative on screen, and just starting to innovate with it. Um, as much as my job lets me be innovative, it certainly has not let me be innovative I quite like I have been on the project. Kind of dreaming up, wait a second, I have a friend that does AR. Let's get some, let's get some that dynamic 3D modeling into the audience experience. Let's walk through the, the consumer experience on the side of what our audiences will be going through. And let's just pack them with as many moments of discovery, as many moments of wonder and inspiration as we can. And I'd say those like three, four months at the beginning really cycled into and I think we're going somewhere. And then when we started pitching it to to all of our partners, uh, we realized we may have something that uh, that will really inspire our audiences. So I'd say it's that beginning phase. Amazing. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you for being here. Thank you for telling us about this. I think it was you that reached out to our team to tell us what you guys were doing. And we jumped at the opportunity to be able to talk to such a large group of VLAs who were from different class years, different, different experiences, majors, the whole nine. So we're very happy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. And I think our last team member for tonight is Zach Bell. So welcome, Zach. And I know that we do have a video to share. So I don't know if you guys would like me to cue that up first or if you want Zach to talk sure. about it a little bit, but Zach, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna, I don't know if this is embarrassing or awkward, but I just have to tell you that I wanted to share because on the Yale Alumni Facebook group, there has been so much conversation around Clubhouse, the new app for iPhone users. <laughs> and when you sent me over the video today, I went and obviously looked at your profile, your, your website, and I saw the image from the Clubhouse app and I was like, wait a minute, what's yeah. going on here? And so everyone like live and in person, Zach Bell is the photographer of the image that is the Clubhouse app. So Yaley's, Yaley's are everywhere. You, you guys are amazing. Very cool, Zach. Fun little fact. I know we're here to talk about the wandering, but a that was a pretty cool that was moment. A moment. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to have your work be out in, in the public sphere like that. I've never had my work be so exposed like that before, but it's, it's pretty fun. Well, it is a very cool picture, and I have been talking endlessly about Clubhouse at YAA the last couple of days, so mm -hmm. it was a fun, fun intersection of two different things that I'm doing. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Zach, and, and if you want me to play the video, I can get get started with that, but let, let's just hear from you real quick, where you're from, your Yale cool. experience. I'll just give you, yeah. Sure, I'll just give you a brief intro, and then you can play the clip. So uh, my name's Zach. I was uh, Pearson 2014. Uh, on The Wandering, I did a lot of the film stuff, so I uh, wrote the screenplay based on the story that uh, the sort of co-creators uh, generated together. And then now I'm editing the film with our director, Laura, who's also Yaley, and uh, I'm doing the animation as well. So that's currently, you know, uh, in progress. We're, we're making progress on the animation stuff, but it, it, it takes a long time. Uh, and that, that's basically it. Uh, I think the the work on it would be best described by showing the clip. I think that's, I'm excited. I'm Now that you guys, I think this is good timing, now that you guys have all talked about your different roles to be able to show this little clip, I'm very excited. So thank you guys for being willing to share this with everybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Flag me down if for some reason you can't hear it or can't see it, okay, everybody, deal. We're, we're a team together tonight, okay. Leise flehen meine Lieder durch die Nacht zu dir. In den Stillen ein Herniedel, Liebchen, komm zu mir. Schlange wie Pfeil rauschen in 
des Mondes Licht. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what we just saw, Zach. Yeah, so I didn't want to give too much away of the plot. So I chose uh, the first part of episode three, uh, where the Wanderer is walking into this performance of a song called Stanchion. Uh, so I, I chose this clip because I just thought it was a really good representation of the aesthetic of the project that we were going for. And I, I thought the, you know, the performance is just so magical to like hear these words coming out of the mouth of this like beautiful performer. And then the person who is actually the voice that we're hearing is sitting in the audience as, as the wanderer. So I just thought it was a representative clip of, of you know the peak of of what we had done on the project, and and obviously like there there are so many of so many other film moments that are amazing that I can't wait for other people to see. Uh, uh, this is just a very small magical moment that I I loved when I was editing. Like this this is one of my favorite episodes to edit, and there are four of them. So. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Zach. And I know that we just saw, I think we just saw Jeremy. So Jeremy, I don't know if you have anything that you want to add to that clip or anything, any special memories of putting it together. Just what does it mean to you to see it like that? I feel like all of you are smiling in the background, looking very excited and happy and tell us just like a little bit. Well, I think there's, there's a story. There's definitely a story around what this clip was on set. Oh. Yeah, I mean, so this was this was um this was an interesting moment. First of all, I actually think this is the first time that that some people on this call saw that clip because actually I think it's the first time that anybody in the world outside of the, the team that's been editing has seen that clip. So that's exciting. So oh, that makes sense now. Seeing now yeah. that I saw all of your faces in the background, I was like, okay, something's happening. Are they do they have a joke? I don't know. So okay, that helps. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, that's Jeremy. Part of I mean, that day was that day was crazy. That was one of the craziest days of my entire life. Um, I, I, I would say um, one, it was actually very emotional also seeing, seeing Bambi sing that song, perform that song, Bambi's an, Bambi Banks Poulet is an incredible, unbelievable performer and um, seeing what she brought to that song was um, really, really emotional to, to watch. So, so that was pretty amazing. The other thing that was crazy was um, because of some some things that happened leading up to filming well actually i can just say this one of our performers the performer that was supposed to play this role got COVID. actually so we had to recast this character in two days and bambi banks coulet ended up stepping in to play the role and she was unbelievable and i was actually in the audience while they were singing, while she was singing the song, prompting um, Bambi with the German. So I had to teach Bambi how to sing this German in two days, which was really insane. And she did a really, really, really beautiful, beautiful job. Like, like I, I un, unimaginably beautiful. Um, but it was insane. It was insane. So that's that's, yeah. the, that's and, the and I, I think that translates to like when I was editing it too. It was like I didn't want to cut away from the yeah. performance just because it was so entrancing. So she's unbelievable. She's the real deal. I think. Yeah. So I think Callista had something she wanted to add. Callista, go right. Oh ahead. yeah. I mean, I I just wanted to paint this picture a little more clearly. Jeremy is literally yelling the song in German below the stage and Bambi is perfectly in character delivering what you just saw for like two hours of filming with and, and literally before every single one and we have another cast member with with the, the with the German and we're playing the song because our, our our performer that we had hired before I think had a what three months three months to, to memorize a song in German it's a very it's a it's a hard thing to do um and Bambi had two days and so uh so yeah but it really worked out that's also what happens though when you're trying to do things in the time of COVID it's very lots of challenges yeah it's expected the unexpected you never know from day to day what's going to happen which makes this even more impressive that you were all able to come together and make this 
pretty magical piece that I'm, I'm really hopeful that folks who are watching tonight and will watch this in days ahead will follow you guys on Instagram. We'll check you out on the website. You can purchase tickets to be a part of The Wandering. Do you guys have, we, we're coming up on an hour because we've been chatting all this time because you guys have such great stories to share with us. So I just want to give you anybody who has any parting thoughts or any last things that you want to share about this experience. You know, once again, it's so exciting for us as, you know, for me as a member of the Yale Alumni Association to see a, such a large group of Yaleys come together and put together something so amazing and to also partner with our current students, which is, is incredible. That is what this is all about is sharing those resources and being together as a community, not just for four or five or six or seven years, but for, for your lifetime. So I'm really excited to be able to highlight your partnership and your team. So I'll leave it to you guys for any parting words, any last thoughts. We will make sure that everybody has the link to experience the wandering.com, how to find tickets, how to get in touch with the team. Jeremy, Calista, Zach, Charlotte, Max, I mean, anybody? Well, Calista, you should jump in. I mean, this is something that Calista and I talk about all the time. This show is a product of friendship. Um, and, and really, I'm looking at all of your faces on this call and it makes me really overjoyed. Um, and, and also a product, I mean, in, in a very pure sense of just like, I don't know, friendships that exist that because, because of Yale, we were all there together. I think the other people that are seeing this, that are, this is on the Yale alumni group, right? Like all of you guys that are seeing this, they probably also have, um, people that you know from Yale that like helped you get through this pandemic, um, and actually made it and, and made it joyous, I think for, for me, maybe for you. Um, and I think this show is a big product of, of the connections that we, that we all have with each other. Um, and, and that's kind of how this piece was born. So if you guys want to be a part of another aspect of kind of like the Yale community connecting together during this time, we hope you'll, um, you'll check out The Wandering at experiencethewandering.com. Yes, and I'm just going to jump into that. If anybody who's watching makes, uh, is interested in making new work or contemporary work, um, do it. I'm trained as an actor. I do not have experience producing. This is the first show that I, this was the first film I'd ever produced. And you, do, do it, you can do it, you can do it. And it is so, 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 so fulfilling. And uh, especially if you are a young art artist and you're waiting to make the thing that you've always dreamed of and you don't think you can do it until later, you should just do it now because it, people will respond positively if you are, doing your dream project, people will um, be interested. You guys are amazing. You you actually, you know, Jeremy, you just hit on something. This process of Yale Alumni Live, this is something that actually grew out of the COVID era of working at home and working with all of you and getting to meet all of you has been a great joy for me. So thank you so much for being a part of this. I we, We're literally up on a year. You guys are, I think, close to our 50th show, if you can believe it, on Yale Alumni Live. And we're just, we're so excited to be able to highlight Yaley's stories, because that's how we connect with one another, as you just so eloquently shared with us tonight. So thank you guys for being a part of this. I'm going to go and hit the button to end our live stream on Facebook. You guys are welcome to hang out back here for a few minutes to maybe talk with some of the attendees who are in the Zoom space. But thank you, everyone, for watching. It's been a pleasure hearing from this team of bold Bulldogs of the last decade, Yale alumni. We will tag them. We will make sure you know how to find them, find the wandering experience the wandering guys it looks amazing i'm so excited to hear how this goes and to be a part so thank you all so much see you next time everybody good night